Yes, once again, very warm welcome in Nisanings for my e-lecture. Today, I'm going to discuss design features of human language. And these features were given by Charles Francis Hackett. There are a number of models which talk about different features, different characteristics of human language. But the most famous model regarding the features, characteristics of human language is given by Charles Hackett. He wrote a book, A Course in Modern Linguistics in 1958. When we say design features, and these features are not given at once, rather in the beginning, he gave only seven features and then he further added six features and at last, at the end, he added three more features. So in this way, total number of features are 16 features. In this video, I'll be talking about the brief concept, one-liner definition of all those features which are given by Charles Hackett. <clears throat> One thing that you need to remember before going into the detail that Charles Hackett was behaviorist. He believed that language is a social behavior and until 1950s almost right it was considered that language is a matter of behavior as we develop different kind of habits and that becomes a part of our behavior in the same way language is also developed and later on chomsky noam chomsky gave the concept of universal grammar that language is a system universal system that is present in the mind of every human being irrespective of their color creed caste religion. So you need to know that Charles Hackett was a behaviorist. He believed that language is a behavior rather than a system. Before, in, in, in the beginning, Charles Hackett gave these different features under the title of the key properties of language. So you need to remember the key properties of language. Later on, he gave a new title that is design feature of human language. These are universal features and these are not only specified with the human beings. There may be some other features. There may be some features which are present in other communication systems. Out of these 16 features in different other communication systems like animals communication system, birds communication system or other tracking system is also that communicates the message. So certain features are also present in other communications. So these are universally acknowledged. But some features are only and only specific with the human beings. So let's move towards the very first property that is vocal auditory channel. Vocal auditory channel. It means that human beings produce language with the help of their vocal, vocal tract, that speech, produ speech is produced. And then different waves are transmitted to the receiver, to the listener. So this is the mode of communication. Humans select mode of vocal and auditory. Speech is produced and then it is perceived by the human being. So this vocal auditory mode is selected for human communication. We also see exceptional cases, sign language, we see signs are not produced through vocal track, rather we make certain gestures. So there are some other communication system which are not executed by this mode of communication, vocal and auditory. There are certain animals, birds, which produce some kind of chemicals and that chemical conveys the message, right? So th this case is not present, this, this, this mode of communication, this, this channel, vocal auditory channel, this is not present in all the communication system. We see trafficking signal, so sounds are not produced and not perceived by the ears. So in this way, this is uh, a bit unique and distinctive features of human language. Next, we see broadcast transmission and directional reception, broadcast transmission. Whenever human beings speak, their waves are spreaded in all the directions. And, but the human beings perceive from a particular direction. This is what we call broadcast transmission. Sounds are transmitted in all the directions, but receiver receives 
from a particular direction. We call it as broadcast transmission and directional perception. Sounds are projected in all directions simply. Sounds or signals are projected in all directions but perceived in a specific direction. Next we see transitoriness or rapid feeding. Signals, whatever we speak, this is the combination of different signals. For example, if I say uh, I like linguistics, for example, I like these are different signals. At the very moment when these signals are produced, these signals quickly diminish. These signals rapidly fade away. For example, when I spoke the word a course in modern linguistics, produce the sound, produce the signals, and right after movement, these, uh, these sounds are quickly diminished, right? Eliminated, and these are quickly uh, faded. This quality is considered as uh, rapid fading or transitory. There may be some other communication system in which we see that signal is given and for a long time that signal remains at that particular place. But in human beings, we see that signals are uh, quickly faded. Next we see interchangeability. Interchangeability. Right? Interchangeability means the turn taking at the moment Human language has, has got this capability that at the same time you can perform the role of speaker and after that you become the listener, speaker and then you take turn and you become listener. This quality is considered as interchangeability. Speaker can become listener and listener can become speaker. Interchangeability. Total feedback. Total feedback. Can you realize that when we are in the position to give feedback, only in the position when we, we monitor the things, we modify the things, and uh, sometime we are in the position to reconstruct, right? So this is the ability in human language that whatever we speak, we make certain kind of sounds, we keep on monitoring. And sometimes we say, sorry, uh, th this is the mistake that I committed, and then we try to re construct our sentences. So this is the ability which enables us to monitor the language, to modify the language and to reconstruct different signals. This quality or this feature is considered as total feedback. Ability to perceive the signals, what they transmit, right? Whatever we are communicating, we also perceive and we also try to comprehend and we monitor, we control our language, we modify language, ability to control, modify and uh, monitor the language is considered as total feedback. Next quality, next feature characteristics of human language is specialization. You know, there are two kinds of behaviors, intentional behaviors and biological behaviors. Sometimes uh, different signals are produced due to biological reasons, sneezing, coughing, sometimes you feel cold and you provide, you produce certain kind of sounds, right? These are biological based, biologically based production of sounds, right? This is the requirement of our biology, our, of our physique. But sometimes we communicate with certain intentions. We want to make requests. We want to apologize. We want to pass a statement based on severe criticism. So these are intentional behaviors. So language, human language is specialized to perform intentional kind of behaviors. This is not only limited to express biological needs or biological certain basic reflexes. Fine. Next we see, yes, semanticity. Semanticity. Semanticity, you know, this is again semantics. Uh, it refers to meaning. Right? In language, there is specific signal to express specific kind of meaning. As we have given different uh, names to different objects, we refer this, this is chair, this is, for example, marker. So marker is a word and it, it is attached with a particular object. So this is what we call as 
semanticity that in human language we we signify certain objects and we give certain meanings to certain signals and uh, you see language signals represent specific meaning language signals represent the ability of language to represent different objects with the association of certain meanings and these associations are fixed in one language you might refer kal kalbun like this one this is for dog in another language that is fixed expression and dog is there in another language urdu language the word kutta we use so different signals are used to specify different objects so meanings are given to different objects in language and this capability this ability of language is considered as semanticity next we move towards yes arbitrariness there was a great debate between aristotle and plato aristotle believed in arbitrariness and uh, plato favored iconicity what does it mean arbitrariness right mostly people ask this question why do we call this particular object with this name why fan is called as fan why mobile is called as mobile what what's the reason behind this why do we call marker as marker so we don't see most of the time we don't see any reason any logical connection between form and meaning for example as i have given the example this one kal we call we refer particular animal with this word this is form and the meaning dog there is no logical relationship we can't say that it resembles like dog that is why we call it as kalbun and it is the word dog resembles with that particular shape of that animal that is why we call so why chair is called chair why do we refer kursi in urdu language to that particular object so there is no logical connection there is no natural connection between the word between the form and meaning this is what we call as arbitrariness sometimes we see there is physical resemblance between the form and meaning that we call it as iconicity so there is no iconicity in language there is iconicity i, I don't say iconicity is totally absent from language but that's the very minor part of the language as we see anomatopic words sounds are words for example kuku miau miau so these are different words these are different forms which represent its meaning and there is logical connection between miau miau and the meaning which is referred by this miau miau logical connection is there so this is what we see absence of iconicity is called arbitrariness hope it will be clear to you next we see discreteness 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 mean unique one right uh, signals can be classified into distinctive elements discreteness mean distinct for example we see we have we have in english language number of sounds right if we talk about alphabets and then phonemes basic sounds 44 sounds so these are discrete elements ability ability to classify the language into distinct categories so p b t these are distinct category and individual at individual level these are not meaningful for example if i use the word this one b n these are sounds at the moment not words and uh, this sound bin right and uh, nib so we we can divide this word these signals into discrete elements like this this is what we call it as discreteness signals of language can be classified into distinct categories distinct categories this uh, if we analyze animals language for example if if any cat produces this kind of utterance meow right we can't change this amium meow refers particular meaning 
and if we say we change it as I have changed the position of these different sounds because human language has got this capability to classify into different objects and then those different discrete units can be further uh, used to make new kind of structures All right next we see displacement displacement this quality of language enables human beings to communicate about those things which are not physically present for example we can talk about our past we can talk about our future so we can also give name to those things which are not physically present but only present in our mind ideas in our mind new ideas new concepts can be generated we can talk about different philosophies which are not physically existing in our which are not physically present in our physical life so ability to talk about past and future and ability to talk about those things which are not physically present this is what we call it as displacement displacement next we see productivity it is also considered as openness creativity openness that language is not closed we we don't have any fixed kind of uh, number of sentences although we have in different languages fixed kind of sounds right but out out of those fixed sounds we can create infinite number of sentences the ability to produce creative sentences novel utterances that is what we call as productivity you see whenever we hear whenever we listen dog whenever we listen crowing of crow they crow in the same way there is no creativity there is no productivity sometime we can also even make those sentences which we have never ever heard before and we mostly observe uh, these sentences from different babies and we are quite surprised that how this baby has got this kind of sentence might be he or she had been taught by someone but this is not necessary that human babies are only capable to produce only those sentences which they have heard or which they have learned from anyone no because this quality of language productivity openness and creativity this enables human beings to produce new sentences new structures next we see cultural transmission that human language is culturally transmitted it is the culture which is responsible to transmit one language from one generation to another generation although as we see there is mechanism there is hardwired mechanism in the mind of every human beings as somebody said that seed remains seed unless it gets proper environment seed will remain seed why because there is certain kind of environment is required for the nourishment of that seed in the same way a system is present in the mind of every human being but to trigger that system a linguistic exposure is necessary right this is as we see for example a dog that belongs to america and the dog that belongs to pakistan both dogs they never got a chance right to meet each other but still both dogs produce same kind of sound same kind of utterances what is the reason because their language their communication is not affected by culture their communication is not affected by society they have not learned to produce certain utterances with the help of culture but human beings if you are born in pakistan in urdu context in punjabi context and if you are placed in america both human babies will produce different kind of language so what does it suggest it suggests that human languages are achieved are acquired with the help of culture right next we see reflexiveness we can talk about you you may not see that any any dog is teaching or any dog is talking about language that these are parts of speech and these are uh, certain other structures of language and this is very complex and this is very easy right so we should change the methods nothing like this these are we human beings we are capable to talk about language with the help of language as at the moment but i'm doing i'm trying to teach you characteristics of human language then we can also talk about functions of language what is the origin of language this is all about uh, different elements or aspects of language and we communicate with the help of language ability ability of language to talk about language is called as 
reflexiveness. Human can use language to talk about language. This is what we call it as reflexiveness, duality of patterning, right? You, you see, uh, we sometimes we see uh, we at one level is uh, that is called at distinct sound level. Distinct kind of sounds are produced b, m, l, r, right? At this level, we are not concerned with the meaning, right? But at the other level, we can make different patterns from these distinct sounds. We can change these distinct sounds into meaningful patterns. That is the second level, distinct meanings. And the first one is distinct sound. At one level, we can produce dis distinct sounds. At the other level, we can produce different meaningful utterances. So these are two levels. This is what we call it as duality of patterns. We, we, we can't limitize that these are only two levels. Sometimes we see we can also study language at morphological level, then syntactic level, semantic level. So these are different patterns that we see. But most important that we see one level is only a uh, distinct kind of sounds, the other one changing of those distinct sounds into meaningful patterns. Next we see prevarication. This is very specific to human being, right? No animals, no birds are able to deceive others, right? To tell a lie, right? But this is the ability of, and don't confuse it with productivity. Don't confuse it with other, uh, with displacement, right? This is something different, prevarication the ability to lie or deceive, right? We can pass, we can make false statement, we can make meaningless statement. As you see, colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. If you try to find out the meaning of this statement, might be, you won't be able. In the same way, number of other statements, number of other words can be created, which are useless, which are false, which are meaningless. So this is, the ability of prevarication, ability to make false statement, to tell a lie, ability to cheat. Last one is learnability. Language is learnable, language is teachable. Human language can be learned as number of students, number of learners want to learn other languages, right? They are bilingual, they are multilingual. Why? Because they can learn language and human language can be learned. Don't we don't see this learnability and teachability in other communication system. We also see some kind of animals, uh, some kind of communication system, right, which are a bit different from uh, human communication. For example, if you see the communication system in honey, there are three major three types of dancing, round dance, tail dance, and transitional dance right so these different dances different kind of dances depict different kind of meaning if the distance of food if the distance of their eatable things is less than 50 meters then round dance right will be performed and if more than 50 and 50 to 100 meters there is distance then tail dance will be performed and traditional dance will be performed the distance in between uh, above which i have discussed right in the same way in ants we see there is also a communication system that is based on their production of chemicals different ants produce different kinds of chemicals to express different kind of sometime to threat sometime to call sometime to ex express the availability of food. So in the same way in monkeys and uh, chimpanzees, elephants, different other species have got their own specific kind of communication system. This is all about today's lecture that, is, uh, that was about design features of human language. Thank you so much.